We call ourselves the Green Parish Action Group. We started in 2021. It was actually Mike Starr's idea. And I think it came out of the problems we were having in the area with drought and water restrictions. So the first thing we thought about doing was installing a rainwater tank. Now, of course, we did talk about the cost, but we had just had a, a wonderful bequest from a long-term parishioner called Robert Watson. And so a rainwater tank seemed really appropriate. The heart of the system is the storage tank. It's collecting water from uh, rainfall on the roof of the parish hall and accumulating it. And then we're using it. Initially, the goal was to be able to sustain our, our plantings through the summer, through these droughts when we're not permitted to use town water outside. But we expanded it to include flushing toilets uh, so that that gray water use allowed us to save demands on the town water system. Well, there is a, a company on the coast called Rain Farmers and um, Paul Leroy. And um, so like he installed it. We don't tap any water from the church roof, which is bigger in area than the, the whole roof. So there's a possibility to of putting in further rain tanks that could have wider wider use there. Especially if we're going to have a community garden, then we need to be able to ensure that it gets water all the way through. So the work we've been doing falls into various categories. And one of the categories is improving the infrastructure of the church to reduce the carbon footprint of the church. So one of the things we've been doing is working on insulating the hall, which you see behind me, the roof and the, the basement area um, to in, improve that prior to perhaps putting a heat pump into replacing the baseboard heating um, with a heat pump. So that's kind of on the cards and I think getting a lot of support. The opportunity for heat pumps in replacing fossil fuels is really important. And to be able to do that as a collective for, for sourcing the pumps through um, uh, diocesan negotiation or however that happens uh, would be terrific. So we're just starting off on this Mapping the Garden project where we encourage people to contribute pictures and stories and knowledge about the grounds. One thing we want to do as, as part of this is to use some of that knowledge to create a guided walk for people to come you know, off the street and um, either in paper form or electronic form using Q QR codes. Well, I think that it had sort of um, breaking effect and also encouraging effect. So the breaking effect is costs, like we're still paying for the renovation of the of the um, church interior. And so there was a little bit of, oh, not more cost, not more cost. But um, the grant from the diocese plus Robert Watson's legacy made, um, you know, just took care of that. It no longer had to be a consideration. And so people could buy, breathe Great. a sigh of relief. Um, but the other thing is, look, Heck, we virtually had to do the, redo this whole building. What's a little rain tank, you know? And what, what's a little insulation in the, in the attic of the, of the hall? The hall is by far the oldest building on the property, and it's older than most of our houses. And so people sort of think, oh yeah, old and rather decrepit. We do need to do something about bringing it up to standard. Another thing where churches have have some difficulties in, is in financing the initial cost. Um, so if there were a way for the diocese to offer low interest loans um, to be able to get a particular parish over that hump of instead of replacing their gas furnace with a high efficiency gas furnace, which is cheaper, give them encouragement to move to heat pumps rather than that intermediate step and get off the fossil fuels. We realize that we're already working as a, as a partnership within the, in the church. Now we need to link up with other groups in the community so that 
we can boost our effectiveness by working with other groups, not just working with individuals. Unless there's a person who's interested in taking on that responsibility, it's much less likely to happen. And the the motion of synod to have these had this position created in parishes, a volunteer position, uh, I think was wise. And I think it assigns some responsibility and provides a nucleus for a group to form. And our group, the, the four of us at the moment, have had very uh, satisfying discussions. And I think we've had some, some influence. Uh, and it, it can grow with some of the ideas that we have. And following up on what Bruce said, you don't have to be a person with expertise to take it on. Really, it has to be an interest, something of a passion for you. We're a phone call away. Just phone and say, I want to do this, but what do I do? And there we go.